In this video, I'm going to check out 10 JavaScript coding examples, which are clean and fresh, like that first breath of Mentos after I mint. If you haven't realized already, I'm on Dev.2, one of the best websites for articles on all topics, including JavaScript. This one was written by Ibeck, and he's got the 10 lists in here, which we're going to be checking out. For our first example, we're using a conditional operator, which is the question mark over here. What we want to do is check whether A is greater than B. And if it is, we want to apply a value to foo. In this case, it's either apple or it's bowl. Now, the reason that this one isn't done very well is because we've got a little bit of redundancy here. We're setting foo up twice based on this conditional operator. And because of that, we've got a bit of a code smell and it doesn't smell too good. The better way to do this is maybe just use an if else. But since we're not using if else, we're using these conditionals, we want to have a single line without any redundancy. So having a foo set based on the condition of A is greater than B and then applying the screen is a much cleaner code practice. Let's take a look at another example. This again, we'll be looking at conditional operators. But for this conditional operator, we've got a object here, a JavaScript object A. This A attribute will have a key of either foo or bar based on whether the C value is greater than a D value. If it is, it'll apply the string apple over here. If we take a quick look at this, we're doing that fallacy of trying to set the variable inside the conditional and you don't really want to do that. You want to set that on the left hand side. What we're going to do is create the object here A by wrapping it inside of curly brackets. Then we're going to assign a key and a value. For the key, we're going to put it inside of square brackets. And by doing this, we can apply the conditional operator here to check if C is greater than D. If it is, we'll apply foo. Otherwise, we'll apply bar. And finally, we'll set the value here as a string of apple. This is a much cleaner piece of code. It's almost as clean as my car. And realistically, by doing it the proper way, we're able to have the scalability to add more keys and values with more conditionals if we needed to. Let's take a look at our next example here, which is doing exports of multiple variables. This is something that I always get wrong, especially when I'm working in React, I always do it this way, which is manually exporting every single thing as you come across it, whether it's a function or variable or a component. I've got exports all over the place, and this means that I lose track of them. They could be here or there or anywhere. And realistically, whenever you're doing any exports, you want to have one main export at the end of your file. That way you know exactly what you're exporting and you can update it as well. This next one's a little bit tricky. It's about declaring and assigning values from objects and properties. We've got an object here called foo, and we've got some values here for X and Y. We want to be able to assign them to the variable here, A and B. To be able to do this, yes, we can do it this way, but it's not the best. A better way is to do things like destructuring. And for example, here we can grab foo and pass in const with curly brackets. And by doing this, we can define what properties we want. So for example, for the A value key and for the B value key, we can actually assign the property of X and Y that was inside of foo. This you might see more often these days in React when we're pulling out different properties straight from props. And it's a useful quick way to be able to do this and assign it to values. In our next example, number five, we're going to be doing some destructuring, but this time with some arrays. For this, we have an array called foo. We've got a couple of items here in index zero and one. For these two, we're assigning index zero to the A value and we're assigning index one to the B value. There is a better way we can do this, which is using the structuring here, where we apply that first and second index straight into this destructured A and B value. This is much cleaner and easier to do. And it does look a little bit funny, but you get used to it the more you do handle destructuring in general. This next one is about grabbing different elements inside of a DOM on a web page. The traditional way and the way that I usually do it is simply grabbing the element ID, which in this case might be A, and then assigning it to the variable here A. This is pretty standard. I'm sure we're all used to this, but there is a more complicated way to do this. And I'm not too sure if I agree with this, but it is something that you guys can check out here. And it's where you might create an empty 
object called elements here, and you might loop through A, B, C, and D on A for each. And for this, they automatically can be assigned a key and a value dynamically based on the for each, and then you destructure them back out. This does look a little bit complicated for my liking. I personally probably would be just doing it the way above, but if you get into a page where you have hundreds or even thousands of different elements and you need to be able to loop through them really quickly, this could be a good approach. Let's check out what our seventh entry here is, and it is to use logical operators for simple conditions. This essentially means don't use if scripts. For example, here we've got an if script checking if foo is true. And if it is, we'll do something. A better way to be able to handle this is simply check, is foo true? And if it is, do something. This is what it means by using logical operators to complete the same functionality as we would normally do if we had a simple conditional. Okay, that was a mouthful, but let's move on to our next example here, which is passing parameters conditionally. This is sort of similar to what we looked at earlier. In this case, we've got an if script. We're checking if foo is false or if it's not true. And if it's not true, we're assigning foo to have the string of apple. And finally, we're calling bar, passing in foo and kip. Now, a simple way to be able to do this is simply pass in to call the function bar, passing in foo. But if foo is not true, then we pass in the string apple and the variable here kip. Does that make sense? I hope it does. <laughs> and sometimes in JavaScript, we have to deal with a lot of zeros. When we do this, we can actually use additional symbols to be able to clarify this. So here we've got this example of a salary that might be using sense as a benchmark and needs to be divided by a hundred or a thousand, depending which currency it is. So it's like 15 million or something like that here. And we've got also a text at attribute as well. So if we wanted to get rid of all these zeros here, we could pass in 15 E7, and this simply adds seven zeros to the end. We can again do the same here for the tax section where we do E6, and this adds on six zeros. I actually never knew about this, and this is really cool. And finally, we've got our 10th item here, which is assigning the same thing to multiple variables. I guess there is a simple way to do this. Instead of having A equals D, B equals D, C equals D, obviously everything can equal itself. And I'm sure you've seen this before. It's something that I often do, but if you're assigning all these values to equal themselves and they all have JavaScript references, why are you even doing this? Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed these 10 examples for clean code in JavaScript. If you did, hit like and subscribe. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.